Today I finished the belt buckle for my son's friend, Quincy. Welcome to another episode. In the last episode, I finished the front side of the belt buckle for my son's friend, Quincy. In this episode, I'm going to mill soft jaws, flip the part over, cut off the back, and then surface the back, cut out the pocket for the, the clip and the, the hook, and then it will be finished. So let's head to the machine and uh, start working on it. I have the hard jaws in here right now. So the first thing I need to do is, is change them out. So I'm gonna grab the parallels out of here and clean them off a little bit. Okay, I was uh, guessing this was Imperial, but it feels like it's metric. Yep, it's metric. Okay, the fit is a little bit tighter, so I'm gonna try going back to the Imperial for loosening this because this is too loose for with Imperial, but it works really well when it's at an angle like this, so. That's nice. Now I need to make sure I don't put this, leave it in the machine because in the past when I've done that, it's fallen down. And so I don't want that to happen. Now I'm not sure what it is with this vise, but uh, it doesn't, uh, it just colors really, really easily. Uh, I think I mentioned before, I'm not very happy with this vise. It's a uh, Char's four inch vise. They've uh, discontinued the vise, so it's not available anymore. And uh, I've had some quality issues with it, so I'm planning to get a nicer vise at some point, but it's what I have now. So I'll go ahead and put in the soft jaw. Get the screw started. Make sure it's all the way down and flat. Yeah, you can see how that's discolored as well. I'll put some WD-40 or something else on here and clean this up later, but uh, you know, and you can see there's rust on the bottom. And it wipes right off of this, so it's coming from the, the vise itself. And you know, as I say, I'm not too happy with this vise. The next thing I need to do is put in a piece of two inch stock in between the two soft jaws so that uh, I have pressure on them while we mill the soft jaws. Okay, so now we're ready to uh, set up the, the coordinates and then start milling the soft jaws. I've set the zero to be this corner right here, basically here, the front, and then the top. Now, when I look at this, one thing I do is I, I close one eye so that I'm looking with a single eye straight forward to eliminate as much of the parallax as I can. And when I do that, 
I think I'm getting to within a few tenths of the same location each time. So that's one way to improve the accuracy. I created a model that has the soft jaws in it as well as the model itself. Let me hide this. Subtracted the part from the soft jaws and then added a couple chamfers here since there are some uh, radiuses in the part itself. And the first step is to cut the soft jaws and you can see this is using an adaptive strategy and that cuts out most of it. But it leads, uh, leaves some stair steps as you can see here if I simulate this. It's okay, let me try this again. Soft draws, simulate the soft draws, and you can see the first operation leaves some stair steps. So to get rid of the stair steps, I used the steep and shallow process, which uh, worked really well. It's getting these uh, curved areas on the sides as well as the curved bottoms. So if we simulate this again and look at them, after those two operations. You can see it's pretty smooth. It's not perfect, but it should be just fine for acting the soft jaws. Yep, that's gonna work. I need to add a number 43 drill, so I need a uh, a collet and I need a 2.2 so this one here is uh, 3 to 2 so that collet will work perfectly okay so I got out a uh, tool holder and I'll put the collet in first And then I can put this on. Okay, it's pretty loose at the moment, but according to what it says, it should tighten up. So let's find out. Yep. It's tightening up nicely, so I'll use my makeshift tightening fixer. I really need to make one. Okay. So that's all set to go into the machine and for me to measure the tool length and then I can start the job. So I'm going to pull up to uh, tool 14. And then put this in. Now I need to put my measuring tool on there. So I'm gonna wipe the uh, table, make sure there's nothing on there. Okay, and then I can bring the tool over get this out of the way. Okay. 
and then two offset measure. And then what I need to do is I sub need to subtract four inches, which is the height of that. So minus four dot, and then enter. And now on the screen, you can't see it, but it says minus 10, which is about the same as all the other ones. So I'm going to raise it back up. And now we're ready to start the job. I just need to figure out which way it's supposed to go in there and then I'll get it started. Okay, I checked the um, coordinates. I have the same XYZ starting point or zero point, so that means I don't have to set anything up. I just have to put this in the correct way. And I determined that the bottom of the queue needs to be toward me. So that means I can put this in like so. Get the, the wrench. And then tap this down. All right, now it's all set to go. For the backside, I set up, created this setup, which has the remaining stock. And the first step is to use an adaptive to clear the hat off the top. The next thing is to do another adaptive that clears out the curved part as well as the pocket for the, the clip and the hook. And these two operations together took about half an hour. Next up is the parallel operation, which uh, smooths out the back. This is using a 1 8 inch end mill, running at about 22,000 RPM. I lost the footage for the following operations. The first one is a contour, which is to clean up the edges, the, the inside corners here with a smaller cutter. And the cutter I'm using is a 1 16th inch flat end mill. Then I spot drilled for the three holes that will be tapped for 440 screws. I did a rapid drill. Turns out I could drill straight through without any problems. Although for this one here, as you'll see, I drilled a little bit too far. Now that it's finished with back, the question is, does the clip fit in? So let's have a look. And the answer is yes, it fits very nicely. So I'll take it out, uh, tap the holes, and uh, it should be ready to go. I took a closer look, and right here it, it doesn't really fit in uh, because of the radiuses. So I'm going to go back to the computer and modify this to make it a little bit wider. This section here fits in very nicely but I want this to sit down a little bit flatter. So at this point I can put this back in the mill and tighten it in place. And then I can load the uh, new program and just uh, remill that one section. Uh, I'm going to make these two areas a little bit wider. Okay, here we go. So first, if I put this in here, you can see it, it has room to side to side, and so that fits in there much better. It fits in all the way down. Perfect. I'm pretty happy with uh, how the belt buckle turned out. As you can see, we have the part on the back that I bought from Amazon that has the loop for the buckle and the hook for the rest of the buckle on the other side. And the front looks uh, good. I made one little mistake. Let's see if I can get this to focus. Um, which is right there. I drilled a hole a little bit too deep. But we'll see if he likes it. If he doesn't like it, it's easy enough to uh, make another one. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.